What's going on? Shane, just thoughts on uh, JJ not being here now? Yeah, you know what? I'll say this about JJ. I, JJ is uh, a great person, had a great work ethic, and, uh, you know, he did some good things here uh, for us, but I'm, I'm really excited about his new chapter in Seattle and wish him nothing but the best. Why is that transition so tough to go from wide receiver to tight end? Well, I think, you know, you're outside wide, and now you go inside to start blocking defensive ends. You know, it's a whole new world in there. Um, and you know what? He battled. He did a nice job while he was at it. Uh, but like I said, uh, wish him nothing but the best in Seattle. With those numbers down at tight end, Noah Tangi, I yeah. made some plays. What, what's been the, uh, the difference for him going into this year? Well, I think, you know, going into year two here uh, with Coach Michael, and he's had some experience with Jason uh, in, uh, in Indianapolis. Uh, he knows the system well. Um, and then just keep improving every day. That's what we're all about is getting better every day, and uh, he's been doing a nice job. What has he been doing? I mean, what has he gotten better at doing from the time he's the, the past game, The past game, he's gotten really good. His routes were looking crisper. And then obviously in the run game, in line, you know, blocking defensive end is a tough challenge in this league. And it's all about leverage uh, on those big guys, and he's been doing a nice job. Is our first time talking to you since the game? What stood yeah. out to you about Jalen's performance? Gosh, you know what? He was flawless in the game. You know, six for six. Uh, he was great uh, moving in the pocket on the first play. You know, he got out and made the explosive play on that one. And then he came back and checked the ball down to the back, got another 11 yards there. And then we hit the, you know, pivot over the ball to Jack. And then we hit the chip screen. And then he scrambled and scored a touchdown. And we got called for holding. And then we come right back and he throws a beautiful pass to Dallas. And Dallas is just so strong. And his finish to go get in the end zone was impressive. Uh, it was a really good start. How was the play calling operation? Uh, it was great. You know, we uh, obviously didn't run it there. We threw it six times uh, on that drive, and that's just kind of how it played up, played out. You know, we hit the big one, then we hit another one, then we hit another one. I was like, well, shoot, we're throwing it pretty good. Let's keep throwing it, uh, and that's what we did, and it worked out. Uh, no. Yeah, there was a straight pass game. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we saw him throw on the run. Yeah. How do you go about improving accuracy throwing on the run? Well, I think those are things you work out in practice and an individual, you know, you got to rep it. I mean, with anything, you got to rep it over and over again. And uh, he's been doing a nice job. And Coach Johnson's done a nice job, an individual with him, getting him out of the pocket and working those throws. And uh, it, it's starting to show up big time. Jalen's completion percentage when he threw the ball downfield last year was, was towards the bottom of, of quarterbacks. Are there any tangible teaching points that you guys have worked on, or is that something that just You know what? That's a great question. You know, we, we, we looked at a lot of things. We looked at something yesterday for a while with the wide receivers and quarterbacks, just some balls down the field and how we want to throw them and when we want to throw them. And I think a lot goes into that. And obviously, you know, when, guy, when you catch the right coverage on certain deep balls, right? Because when you throw a deep, I mean, obviously the percentages of throwing the deep ball sometimes are lower anyways. But if you can catch them in the right coverage with the scheme you're running, uh, you can create those explosive plays, and sometimes they're wide open, you know, and sometimes you got to make contested catches, but those are things we got to work on. Do you feel like he's been better at that this camp than he was last year? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you see it in practice. He hit a big one the other day to Quez right down the sideline. Uh, he hit another one to Rager the other day on that post, so it, it's showing up. What did, what did the running backs, um, Jason Huntley and Kenny Brooks, what did they show you Friday night? You know what? Jason's an explosive player, uh, and some of that explosiveness showed up. Um, there's some things we need to clean up from a detail standpoint uh, that we talked to him about, but the explosiveness, the speed he shows, uh, he had some good plays. And then Kennedy's a big, powerful runner. You know, he's, he's that type of guy that can get in there and get you those tough yards through the tackles. Uh, so excited about both those guys. What are you looking for the staff issue in these good practices against the Browns? And specifically for Jason. Yeah, I, you know, I love the joint practices, to be honest. It, it breaks up camp. Uh, it gives our guys another opponent, and it's really all about competing and going out. You know, you get two practices. Obviously, they're in a controlled environment, but, you know, you get that true competition. You know, the situations you can set up with them, you know, it's scripted, and then sometimes you have the call-it periods. But it's just good to go against another opponent. You know, you, you go against our defense for however long it's been, two and a half weeks, just to see new faces out there in practice uh, will be good for those guys. And then for Jalen, same thing. Just treat it like game like atmosphere. Just like we do on practice here, it's going to be the same thing when we go into Cleveland, uh, and we're looking forward to it. So you say a position battle that has kind of got your attention as we're winding down camp? Uh, I can't say specifically one position. Uh, I think we're always competing at all positions. Uh, guys, are, guys are doing a hell of a job right now. I like where the team's at. I like the mindset of all the guys. And, you know, iron sharpens iron, and that's what we always say. So every day we come out here, we're competing. We're going to be competing today. Those six throws Jalen had Friday night, how many of those were like progression throws or where he had to go away from maybe his first read? 
Uh, there's a couple. There's a couple where he got like one, you know, he hit Quez on a shallow route. Uh, that next one, you know, that he was coming, he was like third in the progression there, uh, which was nice to see on that. Uh, and it's, it's awesome. It's good to see. You know, they take away the first read, and that's what's going to happen, right? They're going to take away the first read. He's going to go to the second read. And the great dilemma we have is we have a great skill positions, right? The wide outs, right? The tight ends. And then you got the offensive line, who I believe is the best offensive line of football. And we got a great running game. So, you know, each week it could look different. You know, whether we're running it or throwing it, it's going to look different every week. Nick said something the other day about how um, Jalen sometimes gets criticized for leaving the pocket when it's clean but the receivers are all covered and it makes sense. Can you sort of expand on that and what that means? He leaves the pocket when it's clean? Like the, 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 it, it looks oh, like Oh, yeah, he's yeah. If, if, if guys are covered, right, you're, you're going to hit. That's one of his superpowers is that he can get out on the move and create plays, and we don't want to take that away from him. So when guys are covered, let's, let's go create the big play on the move, uh, and he did a heck of a job of that on the first play. So we don't want to take that away. And like I said, sometimes guys are going to be covered, so don't stand there. He's, he's a great runner. We've all seen that. Uh, and he's going to make big plays that way. What's the benefit then of like getting out of the pocket? Is it, it create different angles for throws? Or well, like that, that too, but also it puts the defense a little bit in the bind too, right? Because scrambles are hard to defend, right? They got to plaster on defense and find guys. And then if we work the scramble worse how we are and we get to our spots, right? That stuff's hard to defend because when the play breaks down, their coverage is from a defensive standpoint, they change. They're like, oh, crit, we're playing this coverage. Here's four. We're in three. And all of a sudden it's scramble. Boom. Now it's like, I got to go find my guy and get on him. Because there's going to be big voids in there when you scramble. Is the downside there that cuts the field in half? Say that again. Is the downside that it cuts the field in half? Yeah, it does. I mean, I guess that would be the downside. But again, I mean, guys are going to get to their spots to where they need to get to, you know? What happened with uh, Andre Hill in practice? You know what? Practice sometimes, you know, guys get heated up, and there's just a little scuffle there. And uh, we're, on, we're, we're over it now, and he's over it, and we're, on, we're good. There were a couple of problems. Yeah. 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 Did you see that at a player? It happens in training camp. You know what I mean? Training camp, it's long days. You go against the same guys. I mean, it happens. It's, it's not a big deal. We haven't seen many reps for Carson Strong out here. Yeah. What can he do to improve while he's not getting reps? You know what? It's the mental side, too. Like, when we're out here and he's doing a hell of a job in the meetings and then we do these walkthroughs, uh, he's getting those reps. And then continually as we go, we'll see how it continues to go with him. But he's doing a good job. In Sunday's practice, was there a concerned effort to get the more involved in this yeah, obviously. I mean, we, when you guys been out and Devontae's a heck of a player, you know, we want to get those guys touches and that's the beauty, right? We got three really four, five, six really good skill guys on the outside. And if we can get those guys the ball, it's going to help us all be better. From an evaluation standpoint, we haven't, we haven't seen much with uh, Grant. Uh, yeah. Uh, did you see enough of him, do you think, in the first kind of yeah, Grant's done a nice job. I mean, from a pass standpoint, he runs really good routes. I mean, that first couple of days, uh, he ran that bender down the middle. Uh, I think it was the first, second day of practice. But you could just show, like, he's a savvy route runner, really savvy, and he knows how to find the dead spots and get open in the zones. Um, so it'll be good to get him back here soon. Shane, there's a lot of new guys on, on defense. Uh, obviously, you're going up against some everyday practice. Is there a guy that's really stood out to you while you've been out here? You know what? Uh, there's a lot of guys that stand out. We got a really good defense. Uh, the DB, Slay, Bradbury's been a really nice addition. He's a really smart veteran player. Uh, and it's tough. You know, you go against these guys, Slay and Bradbury, every day in practice, and the wideouts, they know, right? They know our demeanor. They know the receiver's demeanor. So it, it helps us, right? It helps us. And those guys are talking day in and day out. Um, Jordan Davis, I mean, you can see him improving every single day uh, what he's doing defensively. I mean, he's a huge, huge human being, uh, and he's been, he's been really good inside on defense. He stood out. Thanks, Shane. Good. All right. Thanks, Thanks,